In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about five ways to become more productive in your daily life. So some of these things I've been doing for a very long time, and there's a few of them that I just started doing and they've been extremely helpful. So I hope that some of these tips, if not all of them, will be helpful to you as well. So let's get to it. Tip number one, plan your next day the night before. This one is so crucial for me personally um, because when I go to that calendar, I personally have a big, like it's a wall calendar. It's like two foot by three foot. It's huge and it's got lines on each day. So I really, I actually have everything I'm doing each day on that calendar. But each night I will go to the calendar and I will make sure I know exactly what my day is looking like tomorrow. Um, if, I, if there's some things I didn't get accomplished, you know, on that specific day, I will shift it around, schedule it on the next day or a future day. But the bottom line is, before I go to bed that night, I know what my day is looking like tomorrow. That is so helpful because then when you wake up in the morning, you're not wasting time trying to think about, what am I doing today? How should I do this? What time am I doing this? Because that's such a waste of time. You don't have time to waste. So when you have it all written out and then you have the specific times, so like say you're scheduling to do a workout, write what time you're doing that workout. Um, or for me, I homeschool. So what time I plan to start homeschooling, um, business stuff, what time window am I going to be working on business stuff, appointments, you know what I mean. So everything that you have scheduled, make sure you have a specific time. That way you can just look at that calendar, look at that day and just follow it. And obviously, you know, life happens, things change, probably nine times out of 10, something happens to where your day just doesn't go as planned. But here's something I'm going to tell you. It's better to have a plan than no plan at all. I have this quote that I want to share with you guys. It says, as I rise each morning and take aim at my day, the arrow I shoot may wobble and weave, but at least it's in flight and headed somewhere. So at least if you have a plan, you have something to follow. Whereas if you just say, oh, I'm just gonna kind of see how the day goes and you know, play it by ear, you're not gonna be productive. Now I had to throw this insert in here because I feel like some of you are gonna be like, Brittany, that is too type A for me. I am not the type of person to write an exact time on every single thing I do for the day. And I get it, that method's not for everyone. So if you do want something that is somewhat structured, but maybe not as structured, I would recommend trying to have something called a rhythm in your day. So instead of having exact start times, what you would do is just schedule time frames. So for instance, instead of saying, I'm gonna work out each day at 6 a.m. sharp, instead you would say, I'm going to typically work out between the hours of 6 and 8 a.m. Or say you homeschool your kids, rather than saying we are going to start school every morning right at 8 a.m., you would say we will typically be doing school between the hours of 8 and 2 p.m. So if you have that flexibility to, you know, you don't really need that exact time for your days, you have a little bit more freedom, then go ahead and give yourself time frames so you don't get so stressed out about not making that time deadline, you know? It's better to have a looser structure that you're following more successfully than to have no structure or no plan in place at all. So if having a daily rhythm is more of your jam, then go for it. The main thing is that you want to find the best scheduling method that's going to work for you. Tip number two, stop pressing the snooze button. <laughs> this one is hard, I'm gonna admit, this one is really hard, because like for me personally, there's times where I just want to press the snooze button because I'm used to pressing the snooze button. And so I really just had to just teach myself to stop pressing it, just get out of that habit of pressing the snooze button. Because a lot of times we waste time getting that extra sleep, especially if we just really need to just start our day. So um, there's a verse that has helped me to stop pressing the snooze button when I'm tempted. <laughs> so I want to share that verse with you guys and hopefully it'll come to your mind as you're like tempted to press that snooze button. I'm telling you, I literally, there's times where I was like about to press it and I think of that verse, I'm like, oh no, don't press it, get up. <laughs> so here's the verse that I wanna share with you guys. It's Proverbs 24, 33, and it says, a little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, 
Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. And when I read this version, I was just like, whoa. When you are, you know, just, oh, let me get a few extra 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour of extra sleep, that robs you of your time that you could have been spending doing what you had scheduled that day. And I don't know about you, but when I wake up late, I feel like I'm just behind all day long. I literally feel like a hamster just spinning on that wheel, just trying to catch up, trying to catch up because I woke up late. And so if you have a habit of pressing that snooze button, I hope you will take this verse to heart, Proverbs 24, 33, as a reminder, when you're tempted to press that button, think of that verse and just stop pressing the snooze button. And I do want to mention this. If you're honestly not feeling well, or perhaps you're dealing with some health issues that your body really needs that extra sleep, please do get the extra sleep. You got to listen to what your body is telling you. I can personally attest to that because I'm still on the journey of overcoming three autoimmune illnesses, unfortunately from a tick bite I got last summer. If you haven't seen my videos about that, make sure to check them out. But there are some days where I really do need that extra rest. My body is really requiring it. But then there are some days where it's just out of habit where I wanna be tempted to press the snooze button. I think in our heart of hearts, we know the difference. We know when we really need the sleep versus when we're just pressing that snooze button just because. So basically what I'm saying is just be honest with yourself and use discretion. Tip number three, get your kids to help you. So if you have kids, obviously if you don't, then this wouldn't apply. But if you have kids, get your kids to help you throughout the day. Um, personally, I have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old and they are super helpful as far as you know getting different housework and chores done um, because i've been having them help me so when it comes to doing laundry they fold laundry doing kitchen work you know doing the dishes cleaning up the backyard you know just doing different things that i normally would have to do i just pass those over to them and i'm able to do other things so i'm a big advocate of getting my kids involved in the day-to-day -day chores. They like to do them. I try to make it to where it's not a drudgery. I try to lead by example. I'm not complaining doing chores. And a lot of times we'll just all work together as a family, cleaning the kitchen and doing whatnot. But having your kids involved and not feeling like you have to do it all, that is a huge one. Because there's you know some moms out there, they just feel like they have to do all the cleaning because, well, little Johnny doesn't do it right, or I do it more thoroughly, you know, okay, I get it. I've had that struggle myself, but little Johnny is not going to learn how to do it right if little Johnny doesn't practice doing it. So I'll just give you an example. Um, my oldest daughter, I started teaching her how to make her bed when she was like three years old. When she first started making her bed, it wasn't that neat. <laughs> Obviously, she was just a little child. But what I would do is I would just encourage her. I say, hey, that's a good job. Um, next time, how about we work on making the blanket a little flatter? Or, you know, just encourage them, but just train them along the way on how they could do better. Or when it comes to, say, folding the clothes. Hey, you did a good job. Let's focus on when you fold these towels, you do it like this. Or, you know, just show them as you're encouraging them. And over time, if they're continually doing that housework, they're going to get better at it. That's just the way it goes. Practice makes perfect. All right, so don't be afraid to get your kids involved. Tip number four, take a break when needed. So this one, you're like, what do you mean take a break? I thought I'm trying to be more productive, right? But here's the thing. When you are, say you're just burnt out, you really need a break, you're tired, you're not gonna be as productive if you're not feeling good. So if you're feeling physically just drained, it's a whole lot better for you to take maybe a 20 minute nap so you can be able to have the strength to work more productively than just trying to trudge through it and you're not really accomplishing much. I'll just give you an example. So like a week or two ago, I was doing homeschool with my kids and I was starting to doze off. I literally was like, I was like dozing off. And normally I would have just like 
kept going through homeschool and just like, you know, let's just get to the end, let's just get to the end. But I said to myself, I said, you know what, if I just continue dozing off, I'm not gonna give my kids the quality session that they deserve and it's not gonna be that productive. So I might as well just take a break. And so what I did was I told my kids, I said, hey, mom's gonna take a break. I'm gonna take a nap. I want you guys to do this writing assignment while I'm taking a nap. And then once I wake up, we will resume. And so we did just that. And so once we got back into our school session after I'd taken a nap, I was so much more alert. I was so much more productive. And the second half of our homeschool session went so much better because I decided to stop and take a break. So I wanna encourage you to just be paying attention to just how you're feeling, what you need, pay attention. And if you need a break, then take that break so then you can come back to that activity a lot more productive. And then lastly, I want to share with you tip number five, and that is find the rhythm that works for you. So this tip, I'm actually still in the process of figuring out. Um, I have not found the perfect rhythm, but I will say that each week I am getting closer and closer to it because I'm figuring out what's working and what's not working and just adjusting as I go. But it's really important to just don't give up on finding that rhythm that works for you and your household. Um, you can watch different videos on, you know, how this mom did this and how it worked for her house and how this mom did that and how it worked for her house, but it may not work for your house. So I wanna encourage you just to, you know, try to find something that's gonna work for you. What daily plan is going to work for you? You might get some good ideas from some people, but you may need to tweak some things. But when you have a good schedule, a good rhythm for each day, you will be more productive. And so if you are still trying to figure out that rhythm, don't give up on it. Just start you know, taking mental notes of what works, what doesn't work, and just start applying more of the things that are working well. For instance, for me, I was, you know, at first I was like, oh, I'm gonna do after dinner walks. That's gonna be a great thing to do to my daily life. Um, newsflash, after dinner walks, they don't work very well in my household because I've got a lot of stuff to do after dinner. And so instead of trying to do that, I said, let's do workouts in the morning. First thing in the morning when I'm fresh, when I have the time and, you know, I actually am able to focus on that workout. So that's just an example, but just basically I'm saying, you know, to find the rhythm that works best for you and that's going to get you to be more productive. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and please share in the comments if there were any tips that you found really helpful that you may start applying to your daily life. I'd love to hear about it. And if you haven't already, I want to invite you to join this community by clicking the subscribe button below. On this channel, I'm here to encourage you, to inspire you, and to help you to overcome the daily stresses and obstacles of just everyday life. That's why this channel is called The Overcoming Woman, because as I'm overcoming, I am helping others to overcome, including you, hopefully, to overcome so you can become the woman that God created you to be. All right, so thanks again for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.